I will talk about uh, another uh, point of view uh, of uh, drosophila biology and neuroscience. I am an electrophysiologist, as uh, um, Fabian said, and uh, I am a neurophysiologist. So my point of view is the function, uh, especially the function. And uh, I must say that uh, my uh, background is uh, a medical background and uh, a neurological background. So I was completely uh, pushed to, to watch uh, the function with respect to the minimum uh, or minimal aspect of the lesion of the cellular uh, or molecular aspect, which is uh, exactly what uh, I am not an expert. And for this uh, working uh, on flies, uh, I made the fall from uh, humans to uh, rabbits, uh, rats, uh, um, frogs, and then uh, flies. And uh, working with the flies, uh, uh, I was more interested in uh, uh, exchange and collaboration, uh, considering that my uh, not good preparation in molecular biology with the experts like Fabian or uh, uh, Professor Zordan, who uh, is my friend and uh, collab collab collaborator since a lot of years. <clears throat> uh, considering this, uh, this, uh, uh, considering this aspect, uh, uh, my focus uh, is uh, to uh, understand how is a functioning from the uh, physiological point of view a nervous system. Sometimes uh, I, uh, working with the colleagues, uh, I uh, also. Uh, study what is not functioning or which is the lesion or which is the effect of a lesion, for instance, uh, working also with uh, uh, the collaborators of Fabian, uh, which is the effect of some lesion in the function. But uh, my main uh, focus, uh, and I will explain better my idea, is exactly what is uh, functioning. <clears throat> so for this point of view, uh, I am also working on behavior, and my, uh, uh, my focus is to understand the adaptive behavior of an organism like flies. So, in which uh, way uh, they uh, adapt themselves to the changes to the environment, and uh, uh, which are the mechanisms uh, governing these uh, adaptive behaviors, which are the neurophysiological circuits which are controlling, uh, controlling this adaptive behavior. <clears throat> and uh, uh, this uh, aspect is interesting because uh, it opens another question. Uh, when uh, evolution uh, evolved, or when, uh, which is the effect uh, or in which way these uh, adaptive behavior uh, were changed, or are they changed or not? Are the mechanisms uh, similar or not between, uh, for instance, uh, drosophila and uh, uh, rat, or also mammalians, or uh, sorry, also humans or uh, primates? And if the mechanisms are basically the same, the same. Uh, the neurophysiological circuits uh, governing them are the same, or during the evolution we uh, found other ways uh, or other circuits uh, to obtain the same behavior or the same mechanism. This is, uh, in my point of view, obviously, is my opinion, uh, is very interesting because it gives you a very clear uh, vision of the visual of the nervous system function. So, uh, when we are working on, in flies, sometimes we are working on phenotypes. And uh, so, one point is uh, which phenotype are you watching? is a phenotype related to the normal life of flies, uh, their life in the, their ecophysiological environment, or is a phenotype you want to see. For instance, sometimes we are going to work with flies uh, uh, rightly because it's a very good uh, animal model uh, to uh, introduce uh, altera genetic uh, alteration, mutation, and so on. So we are watching at a phenotype 
which is uh, similar to a uh, human disease. So is it possible to find this uh, phenotype in a so distant animal? So this is a first uh, question. Or are we watching something in the uh, ecophysiological behavior of this animal, which is uh, uh, similar or can be compared to a phenotype or to a behavior watched in humans. I wanted to be, uh, to be clear on, on this uh, aspect. For instance, uh, I was uh, uh, one time uh, walk, talking about uh, uh, a model of schizophrenia in, uh, in uh, rodents <coughs> with a, a, a colleague. And the problem is that uh, I was working with the schizophrenic patients so, and I also had uh, not a good, uh, uh, not a very good uh, um, contact with uh, them because I uh, was in the negative delirium of these uh, patients. Uh, one of them uh, threw against me a chair. So, uh, this is uh, not a very good uh, uh, condition. So, from uh, uh, the point of view of uh, uh, from the psychiatric point of view, a schizophrenic patient is uh, an ensemble of behaviors, very strange behaviors, uh, which uh, uh, are mainly focused on the higher functions of their mind, of their brain. <clears throat> but there are a lot of uh, behaviors, motor and locomotor behaviors, which are not uh, and the main part of the psychiatric uh, uh, analysis, uh, but they are very interesting and very important. This colleague was working on rodents and he was uh, searching to find if this rodent has uh, a kind of a delirium and uh, if it was possible to uh, explain in their behavior uh, that there was a delirium. So the road issued me that the, road and the, the mice is going uh, in, uh, in a corner, he is uh, doing something like this, uh, is uh, not watching anyone, so probably is a delirium. So I told him, oh, it is, uh, is, a good, uh, is a good question, is a good idea. Uh, maybe you can ask him if, uh, you are, if he is uh, watching behind you that there is another mice or something similar, like the like patient. When I asked him, but did you, did you observe any kind of locomotor alteration? Uh, he told me, why? Uh, there is nothing uh, uh, written on the DSM-5, uh, which is the manual for the diagnosis of psychiatric uh, uh, disease. Uh, I told him uh, it's obvious uh, the, the is a psychiatric uh, book, so you need to uh, di diagnose uh, something in uh, uh, humans. But if you go to uh, to um, hospital and you watch for one day a schizophrenic patient, you can find a lot of very interesting things, which you can find also in your rat, probably. So the question is, uh, when you are watching something in your organism or in your animal, you must uh, search for something which is uh, exactly in the ecophysiological uh, life of your organism. And so it could be interesting to understand how is uh, this uh, ecophysiological <coughs> life. So let's go <coughs> to uh, analyze, uh, to, to, uh, to, to, to further in my, uh, in my talk, uh, excuse me for this uh, large introduction. And uh, uh, the, the first uh, thing uh, which is uh, uh, interesting in, uh, in, in flies uh, from the neurophysiological point of view is that uh, flies uh, gave uh, uh, the possibility to uh, deep uh, analyze uh, the synaptic function also from the molecular point of view. This is true. And uh, uh, the um, 
Drosophila um, is, uh, is, is a very interesting, uh, interesting model and uh, many, many important uh, studies and discoveries made uh, in uh, synaptic uh, function physiology indeed they were made uh, before in flies uh, and after were confirmed in, in, in uh, higher animals. Uh, if, uh, uh, before to, to talk about, the, uh, about electrophysiological analysis of synaptic function in flies, maybe I can uh, just uh, show you some uh, uh, brief uh, notes uh, about uh, uh, synapse. <coughs> uh, a brief introduction. <coughs> Here, you okay. Here you see, uh, this is a, 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 a picture, an image, uh, showing the nerve with the, the uh, peri peri peripheral branches in, uh, uh, this is a, a neuromuscular junction in, a skeletal, in mammalian skeletal muscle, uh, in green, and uh, these uh, buttons uh, are the synaptic buttons uh, stained with the, <coughs> the famous uh, bungarotoxin uh, staining. <coughs> Bungarotoxin is uh, a venom uh, from the Bungarus uh, snake. Uh, the first uh, important paper written about uh, the Drosophila uh, synapse was made by Jane and Jane in 1976. So this is the first paper in which uh, the activity of the neuromuscular junction of uh, the neuromuscular junction was, uh, was uh, recorded. And it was recorded in the uh, larval, third eastern larval preparation, uh, especially in a, in a kind of a third eastern larval preparation, which uh, probably everyone uh, knows, uh, is uh, the body wall preparation, uh, in which there is uh, the nerve, uh, segmental nerve innervating. Uh, uh, the any segments of the of the of the larva and uh, the, uh, the the recordings were made especially at the level of the two longitudinal uh, muscles six and seven, usually in the third or fourth uh, segment of larva. What they is did a, they did a practical? Ah, uh, they did a practical. Okay, good. Uh, so, uh, here in this paper, they, they described the, the uh, neuro the synaptic activity, the postsynaptic activity recorded with the intracellular electrodes. And here, which is the companion paper, you see, is uh, <coughs> a companion, they, uh, they uh, showed that the neurotransmitter is a glutamate. From the basic point of view, uh, the uh, recording of the synaptic function in uh, neuromuscular junction is usually made by uh, placing a recording electrode very close to the, uh, to the synaptic buttons <coughs> intracellularly and uh, using another electrode which is uh, the uh, which uh, uh, is the stimulating electrode. In other words, uh, with uh, this other electrode, you stimulate the nerve. So, in other words, uh, you generate an action potential which is going down, uh, arrives uh, to the end of the, of, the, of the axon and induces the, the release of the neurotransmitter. At the end, uh, you have uh, this kind of response which is a postsynaptic response, or better, an excitatory postsynaptic potential, which is evoked by the <coughs> nerve stimulation, in other words, is evoked by an, an action potential. This uh, strange uh, signal here, or noise, is a very interesting uh, uh, figure for, uh, for an, an electrophysiologist because it uh, shows that uh, is the, the moment in which you stimulate the nerve. 
So it's uh, the so-called artifact, and we, it is very important because uh, it, is, uh, it gives us the possibility to also to measure the moment, uh, the time from the moment in which you stimulate the nerve and the moment in which you generate the postsynaptic potential. In other words, you could uh, measure the uh, conduction velocity also in the segmental nerves. A very, very hard job, but you can do it. This is uh, the uh, first, uh, uh, one of the first recordings and uh, in which uh, it, it is shown a very interesting thing. When uh, you stimulate the uh, segmental nerve, sometimes you can record this kind of double, uh, double uh, waves, and uh, these double waves are due to the different boutons uh, uh, located in the, in the neuromuscular junction. Probably, as you know, there are uh, big and small boutons, type 1, type 1 and type 2, uh, boutons uh, and also the uh, probably you know that the the synapse uh, in uh, in the, the neuromuscular junction synapse is uh, is a little bit different from the synapse in mammalia the neuromuscular junction synapse in mammalia because there are many boutons uh, this is a kind of a corollary of boutons along the the terminal the axon terminal which is something uh, uh, similar uh, in mammalians uh, in the nervous system uh, synapses, especially to the level of uh, uh, hippocampal level. <coughs> anyway, if we place uh, an electrode without stimulated, uh, stimulating the nerve, if we place an electrode closer to the uh, synaptic button without stimulating a nerve, we also uh, are able to record some kind of activity, which is this one. You see brief spikes, this, 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 which occurs, uh, which occur sponta spontaneously in uh, in in the in, in the muscle uh, uh, membrane, <coughs> post, post synaptically in the muscle membrane. This is uh, the spontaneous uh, neurotransmitter release. They are due, they are the consequence of uh, uh, random fusion, vesicle fusion with the presynaptic membrane, and uh, uh, which uh, uh, release the, the content, the neurotransmitter uh, uh, content, in the synaptic space and uh, stimulate the postsynaptic receptor. This is a very, very famous image because uh, it is uh, uh, the original image by Fatte Katz in 1950s, uh, where, when these uh, recordings were made. So, what, which are the mechanisms uh, uh, governing uh, 1950s? Uh, which are the mechanisms governing uh, neuros neurotransmitter release? There are some actors, <coughs> uh, obviously uh, vesicles, uh, neurotransmitter vesicles, calcium channels, and this image is very interesting in the sense that you can see that calcium channels are very close to the point where vesicle after having docked to the, to the presynaptic mem membrane fuses. The uh, precise, uh, precise um, site of uh, calcium channels uh, fusion points, which are the so-called active zones, and uh, post-synaptic receptors is uh, possible for uh, a kind of uh, uh, transmembrane signal you made by neur neurexin and neuroligin, which are two very important. Uh, uh, neurexin is a, a presynaptic membrane uh, uh, protein and the neuro neuroligin is a postsynaptic membrane protein. They, uh, they bind together, in this way they mm, register the point of release with the point of, uh, co uh, of uh, detection of uh, 
the receptors. Neural ligand is uh, uh, also uh, connected with the PST95, which is a PDZ uh, postsynaptic protein. And uh, this uh, is uh, very interesting because I saw your NGQ uh, protein and is doing something similar, is putting in, uh, uh, in uh, a specific uh, point, the release uh, with the uh, detecting uh, uh, the release apparatus with the detecting apparatus in the two membranes. The, uh, there are some claims uh, uh, telling that uh, uh, an alteration in neurexin could be could be involved in autism, which is another <coughs> a psychiatric disease. Which are the steps for the release? <clears throat> oh, sorry. The first step is uh, obviously the arrival of action potential. Then uh, we have uh, the uh, as uh, the consequence of the membrane depolarization. There is the opening of uh, calcium channels. Calcium is going in and uh, is. Uh, uh, interacting with the snare complexes or interacting with the synaptotagming and then there is the activation of the so-called snare complexes. <clears throat> so the fundamental uh, points are the possibility that the vesicles are doc docked at the active site through the uh, snare complexes uh, and uh, the possibility that the, um, these uh, complexes uh, are activated by calcium. So uh, the process of vesicle docking and fusion is the limiting process in uh, the neurotransmitter release. Uh, from the functional point of view, the snare complexes, the activation of the snare complexes, uh, give the, uh, the gives the energy necessary to win the repulsion of the two membranes, the vesicle membrane and the presynaptic membrane. These are lipid membranes, so when you uh, get closer to membranes, they repulse together. You need to win this uh, energy uh, energy uh, uh, hole. So, in other words, uh, the uh, snare complexes play a very important role. In fact, uh, botulin toxins and uh, tetanus toxins are cleaving these uh, com these uh, proteins and these complexes, and you have a complete block on your transmitter. Uh, we are uh, using also this complete block from uh, a clinical point of view uh, for treating some kinds of uh, muscle contractures or for aesthetic point of view for uh, uh, releasing muscles, uh, re uh, relaxing muscle by blocking the neuromuscular junction at the level of the face facial muscles for a period of uh, almost six months. Is working well. Uh, yes. Okay. Also for uh, I don't know who is the, the name when you have the uh, paralysis uh, paralysis of gaze also is uh, used. <coughs> uh, this is uh, um, a, a model we developed in uh, in our lab. Uh, in other words, uh, uh, these. Uh, uh, are the single snare complexes, and uh, we uh, uh, we hypothesized that they are uh, interacting together to form a rosette-like super complex. The point uh, of uh, interactions are these uh, uh, these uh, uh, residues, uh, which are uh, the residues. Uh, 206 in uh, humans, in SNAP25 in humans, and uh, uh, see, yes, uh, sorry, 198 uh, in humans and 206 in Drosophila, and uh, the residue uh, 253 uh, on the syntax in. Uh, uh, 
protein of the, uh, the closer uh, snare complex in uh, always in uh, Drosophila. If you uh, if you cut these uh, these uh, bridges, the super complex is disassembled, and even if you have normal snare complexes, you do not have any kind of uh, uh, synaptic release. This happens when you are inf uh, you are uh, poisoned, poisoned with uh, bond E uh, neurotoxin. Uh, if you consider that this is a vesicle, the uh, super complex is uh, formed in the point in which the two vesicles are uh, the vesicle is uh, closed to the or is touching the presynaptic membrane. So this is the top view, and this is the below view, and uh, uh, the ability of this super complex is to uh, get very close the membrane of the vesicle in the point in which there will be formed uh, in the future the fusion pore which will permit the first uh, uh, movement of the neurotransmitter molecules towards the uh, synaptic space and even uh, the complete fusion of the or collapse of the vesicle with the presynaptic So, <clears throat> let's go to, uh, to see something more practical. How is possible to record synaptic activity in Drosophila? Here is the classical uh, preparation. Uh, in the preparation, you see here the nervous system, but usually the nervous system is cut away. So, uh, you need to cut all the, the segments and cut away the, the nervous system. The procedure is not, must be very careful because when you pull the segmental nerve, you can uh, give it, uh, a damage at the level of the neuromuscular junction, okay? And you don't see so well after uh, your recording, they will be not very good. Sometimes it happens that you see a lot of uh, vesicle release, spontaneous release. So uh, I realized uh, in, the, in my experience that this is uh, the consequence of this uh, kind of uh, lesion. This is uh, the uh, <coughs> uh, cartoon with the image of the neuromuscular junction in flies. Why? Uh, Fiber six or seven because they have uh, all only type one buttons, so you do not have uh, the possibility to see other kind of responses due to the uh, release of other neurotransmitter, transmitter, especially the release of octopamine or uh, other peptides that uh, are regulating the, the, the neuromuscular junction response. What can we do with this preparation? We can do a lot of things. The simplest one is this. The measurement of membrane potential using, using this kind of a recording, the intracellular current clamp recording. In other words, we have an intracellular electrode, which is this one, which is placed, placed intracellularly in the, usually fiber six is the larger one. And in this case, in the case of flies, you uh, can place the electrode everywhere in fiber six, because this is a, a very interesting advantage of uh, uh, fly or uh, larval fly muscles, they are isopotential. In other words, uh, there is no uh, decrease of the uh, postsynaptic signal um, whenever you go far from the point of synapse of the button is placed. 
We, this is completely different what uh, is happening from in, uh, in uh, Mammalians. I will go back and show you. Here we are. This is a mammalia preparation. This is the, the recording uh, from an electrode very close to the button. You can see spontaneous activity. But if you place in the same fiber another electrode far from the point where there is the synaptic button, you don't see anything. Why? Because these are the so-called um, local potentials. In other words, they are these, the, the, they are electrical signals in uh, the cell which are uh, sensitive to the biophysical properties of the, of the, of the cell and they dissipate uh, propagating from the point in which they are generated. Okay, they are not action potentials, they are not regenerated through the opening of the voltage uh, gated sodium channel, so when you are going far from the point in which you are generated, you are dissipating, you are uh, going to uh, be smaller and smaller and smaller until you disappear. The space uh, governating of the, the space function governing this uh, disappearance is called the so-called space length constant. In the case of uh, Drosophila, the space length constant is longer than the, than the length of the fiber. So, in other words, there is no dissipation. This is very important because you can place electro where you want, while in, uh, in, uh, in mammalias you need to see, or better, to think about where there is probably the neuromuscular junction, and you place the electro very there in that point. The second point in uh, this preparation is the uh, stimulating electrode. The stimulating electrode is not an intracellular electrode, it's a suction electrode, so it must be prepared in another way. Uh, it's uh, closer to, a little bit wider, closer to a uh, patch clamp uh, microelectrode. Uh, micro so usually uh, I use uh, about 10 micron or 10, 15 micron uh, uh, diameter, uh, fit diameter uh, electrodes. Uh, you don't measure the diameter, you just go by NAC die and by uh, checking your puller. These electrodes are prepared using a special uh, device which is called a microelectro puller. And uh, the, this is a cl classical, uh, the Sutter, uh, Sutter, which is a uh, a uh, firma preparing these uh, pullers uh, made a book which is the micro pipet cook booking and is true is like uh, to cook you need to just to try try and try and try until you find some kind of parameters how long you pull how much is the heat how strong you pull and so on when you find everything okay, it happens that the day after uh, is uh, warmer or is uh, more humid and everything changes. I don't know why, but uh, this is uh, what happens. Uh, obviously, they are very, very close, uh, fine uh, tunings. But when you know very well your cooler, you can do everything. The intracellular electrode is uh, very small, 0.5 micrometers in tip, is an intracellular microelectrode, is not a patch clamp microelectrode, which is wider, as I, I told you. And the, we measure the tip uh, diameter by measuring the resistance for current, uh, for, the passage, uh, for the flow of current, uh, when you give a, a certain amount of current uh, using the Ohm law, 
you can record a resistance. Usually we use electrodes between 15 and 20 mega ohm resistance. Here we, are, we have some recordings. These are the, these are the minis or uh, the, the, the so-called spontaneous re release. These small uh, uh, peaks are called the miniature and the play potential or maps or with a uh, nickname of minis and so on. The interesting uh, aspect of these, uh, these peaks, this potential, is that they are multiple uh, integer, integer multiple of uh, uh, a unit, and this unit is assumed to be the uh, amount of neurotransmitter released by one vesicle. So when you are, uh, when you record these minis or recording these minis is very important because you can calculate the unit amplitude and by dividing this larger potential, you see here we have no more than 0 0.5 millivolts and here we have 20, 30 millivolts. So when you divide 20 millivolts by 0 0.5, you can calculate the amount of vesicle which fused in the uh, after nerve stimulation or during the so-called evoked release. So this is an, an excitatory junction potential or AJP or uh, you can find a lot of uh, definitions. <clears throat> what can you analyze? But obviously you can analyze the amplitude, which is uh, uh, quite simple. But you, you, you can also do a lot of analysis. Uh, if we go to the spontaneous release, you can analyze uh, the inter-event. This is one event and this is another event. The inter-event interval. You can analyze the amplitude of all minis and try to see the amplitude distribution of these minis. Usually the recording of minis is for two, three minus. You can measure the mean frequency of these, uh, of these events. So for instance, in uh, flies, uh, mean is, uh, frequency is about one hertz in Y type. <coughs> As I told you, the amplitude distribution, this is the cumulative amplitude distribution. Okay, here we have uh, two uh, two uh, lines, uh, there is no difference, as you can see, and uh, in, uh, this, uh, in this uh, graph uh, what uh, we see is, uh, for instance, the position of the 50% uh, or uh, the, uh, the position of one millivolt uh, uh, in the uh, point in, in the graph. The distribution of the inter-event uh, intervals, which is this, uh, can be described by uh, an exponential uh, fit because uh, it is important to uh, demonstrate that each event is independent from, independent from the other. So it's a very casual event. Sometimes this casualty doesn't uh, function and uh, it is uh, interesting uh, uh, that it was found in uh, mammals uh, many years ago in the, in the 80s uh, that if you increase uh, mean is frequency, um, for instance uh, giving uh, to the preparation ethanol, uh, you go to uh, a point in which you don't, do not observe anymore this Poissonian distribution. <laughs> And so this signifies that there are specific points where the uh, vesicle can attach and fuses. In other words, they were able to demonstrate, uh, from the functional point of view, the, the active zones. Uh, it's like to tell every one of you to go out from this uh, room at a, a certain point. They are, everyone is going out without a problem, but if we charge the room, uh, 
by twice uh, or ten times uh, more uh, person and you say then go away and you have a uh, difficulty to go out because the number of uh, doors is uh, limited. Uh, here we have uh, uh, another, uh, we have the uh, excitatory junction potential me measured, um, the evoked potential, uh, the measure of the evoked potential, we can measure the amplitude, the rate of rise which gives us uh, information about the, the fusion of the vesicles, the rate of decrease, which gives us uh, uh, information about uh, the, uh, the elimination of the neurotransmitter or about the neurotransmitter uh, uh, receptor interaction, and the area which is connected with uh, also with the amount, uh, the number of vesicles released. This is another preparation, more complicated. We have uh, our current electrode and another electrode, the voltage electrode. Okay? This is a double electrode voltage clamp. In this way, we measure, we uh, inject the current to maintain a certain voltage pre selected by the operator. Okay? And uh, in this way, we measure the current necessary to. In maintain the, the voltage and this current is equal and opposite to the current generated physiologically by the, by the membrane. These are some examples of uh, voltage clamp uh, recordings and uh, in these examples we can see <coughs> uh, interestingly uh, um, a behavior of our uh, uh, preparation. So, if you give uh, more than one stimulation, you can induce some kind of synaptic plasticity. So, in the neuromuscular junction, in larval neuromuscular junction, you can measure synaptic plasticity. This is uh, the response uh, in uh, the second pulse is uh, increased at, uh, sorry, here is increased at 0.4 millimolar calcium with respect to the first one is the synaptic facilitation. Here after a tetanic stimulation in always in 0.4 millimolar calcium we see that the post tetanic uh, post synaptic uh, or excitatory synaptic currents, not the potentials, are larger than the ones recorded before the, uh, the, 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 the synaptic, uh, the tetanic potentiation. Here is the recording made in adults. Uh, the preparation is uh, quite complicated because uh, uh, you need to uh, breathe uh, the animal, otherwise you don't record anything, and uh, the, uh, where you are recording, you need to have the physiological saline. Uh, this is uh, the preparation. In other words, uh, there is a, a, a platform of wax. Uh, the uh, fly is uh, inserted in a slab of this platform. From below there is a small tube giving air and from above you put, uh, you put the, the saline. Then you make a very small uh, hole here using, uh, for instance, uh, uh, an, ins an insulin uh, needle uh, and uh, you have the access through the cuticle, which is hard, so you can break your electrodes. So you need to uh, break the cuticle and then insert the electrode to the hole. Okay. Uh, if you uh, measure the uh, in this way uh, the membrane potential of the indirect flight muscle in this case uh, is uh, very high. You see, 80, 80. <coughs> so you can measure minis again, you can measure the inter-event interval and also the distribution of minis amplitude. 
OK? In adults. But you can also measure action potentials induced in a neurophysiological circuit. This is the giant fiber neurophysiological circuit, which is an escape circuit. It's made by this uh, motor or central motor neuron, which is the giant neuron, and uh, um, thoracic interneuron, and then the thoracic final motor neuron innervating the muscle fiber. If you stimulate the brain of the fly, you can record two types of responses to uh, one response, the action potential, which uh, happens, uh, arrives, uh, arrives very, very, uh, with a long latency from the moment in which you stimulate, and the response which arrives with a very short latency when uh, you stimulate. The difference between the two Stimulation is just only the amplitude of the, uh, the intensity of the stimulus. If you give uh, more intense stimuli, you have a very short stimulation, short response. Here we have the action potential recorded in the, uh, in the muscle. This action potential goes to uh, the longer response uh, behaves uh, or shows the so-called uh, habituation uh, behavior. In other words, we have a, a plasticity, a plas plasticity in the response in which uh, the response you see here disappears, but when you give another kind of stimulus, a different type of stimulus, it reappears again. This is a kind of a central nervous system plasticity, not exactly plasticity, but in any case is uh, uh, typical of this uh, circuit. And uh, I go faster, and uh, this is the same response, short mode, under six seven milliseconds, but you see that his, this is a recorded, a video recorded, so there is a, a delay. And this is the long mode, more than seven milliseconds, recorded using a, a video recording, sim, uh, video recording uh, system, very recently, <laughs> giving two types uh, of stimuli. One stimulus was uh, a, a stimulus uh, a, a, Small intensity stimulus gives the long, uh, long uh, time response, long mode response, in which the fly is uh, jumping and flying very well, uh, going away from the, the stimulus, the visual stimulus. But if you give uh, a very strong stimulus, you have a jump short mode, a jump, and a flight which is not correct. In other words, in the first response, in the long mode response, the fly is able to understand the stimulus, so is an is a selected attention to the stimulus, and he, it is able to organize the, the, the flight. In the second way is a disorganized response. I am not able to understand what is happening, but I go away. It is possible to record also the activity in the, the, in the, in the, in the, in the eyes. Uh, this is the visual system response to the light, this one. Here, differences between different, uh, different lines. But what I wanted to show you is what we are doing now. I, uh, I go away from sleep because probably you already uh, saw this yesterday, so I just uh, uh, jump away from this. This is the video tracking of locomotor behavior we are doing in this uh, moment with this kind of arena. And uh, you can see that uh, uh, if you place uh, some flies inside an arena, you can track uh, the locomotor behavior of everyone. This is possible, it's not uh, 
difficult, but what you are collecting is a, a complete frame per frame uh, data set uh, of the movement of the center of uh, the animal uh, and the orientation of the animal frame per frame. If you are recording at 15 frames per second for 10 minutes, you have a lot of data, about 9,000 data points. In each one you have all these, uh, these, uh, these variables which you can combine to make a behavioral analysis. This is, for instance, the track of a group of animals after 10 minutes. They are going to explore the periphery. <coughs> Here you can measure where they are going preferentially. So this is a way to manage this data. Here is different, this is another line. And here, it's more complicated, you can make a lot of analysis. This is the orientation, for instance, this is the angular acceleration, this is the forward velocity, this is the vector velocity, and so on, and the distribution of uh, this data for E. These are all lines, obviously. <coughs> or, for each fly, you can uh, combine all these uh, variables to paint a behavioral uh, graph, which is called etogram. They are walking, they are stop, stopping, they are sharp turning, they are moving this way, they are turning, they are completely immobile. Here you can combine all the data, this is from one fly, you can combine the data for all flies. You can study the social behavior, for instance, you can paint around the fly an area, so when two flies are uh, interacting together, these areas are uh, merging or overlapping, and according to the, to the orientation of the fly, you can uh, uh, capture these periods and then again analyze them and see if there are some similarities or differences. For instance, uh, when uh, you are, uh, uh, these are, uh, two two uh, interaction, you see that the velocity is reduced in the two flies, and these these velocities are reduced in the same way with the same orientation in many of these encounters between flies. In this way, you can study social interactions. This is the last one. We are doing uh, uh, work with the LEDs, with the LED arena. This is, a, this is a Buridan test. You can see that it's going up and down. This is a recorded... Uh, here you don't see any kind of uh, visual stimulus because uh, it's uh, in, uh, recorded in infrared. Uh, situation, but one is here and one is here. We made some experiment um, uh, putting the flies going, going back in this way, as you saw, but when, uh, uh, after a certain point of time, after uh, uh, they are, were going up and down, we uh, put an imaginary uh, area here, and when the, the fly crossed uh, the imaginary area, another light was opening for a period uh, of three seconds. <clears throat> so it was a distractor, and we studied, as you can see, the uh, trajectories of the flies when they were presented to these distractors. What, uh, this is a, a paper we published uh, very recently, uh, not very recently, we uh, sent for publication very recently, we found uh, that, uh, in other words, uh, they were, uh, uh, they were uh, uh, affected by, by this uh, distractor uh, appearance 
but uh, not going exactly towards the distractor, but in a point which is the middle between the two. So this is called the novelty effect, and is found also in humans. The interesting thing is that they, even if they were, their trajectory was in the middle, they were going in this way, this is one uh, visual steam, this is the other, so I am going in the middle, but I am watching the, the other, uh, the, 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 the distractor uh, stimuli. And uh, we were able to see this uh, by analyzing the orientation of the fly, because uh, the fly is not able to turn the eyes, obviously, so he's orienting all the, all the, the, the body. So he was going this way, and then I go away. <laughs> This is a called, uh, uh, this is a typical for a mechanism of selection for action, okay? Everything is, uh, is uh, uh, elaborated at this level in the central complex. Is, uh, um, we are going, obviously, to test this using the GALF4 system and the opto optogenetic stimulation. Okay, I don't uh, want to talk about the possibility to measure uh, consciousness in flies. <laughs> We, this is a, a, a very, very transla <laughs> not a good translation <laughs> way, but you can measure a kind of electroencephalogram using multi-electrode uh, multi uh, probes. And this is the group working with me. Uh, this the group working on the neuromuscular junction and on the on the is the group of Professor Montecucco, who is a master in uh, bottling toxins, and uh, Sergio Pantano, who was the modeler, is a physicist, uh, modeling the, the multi-complex. Uh, Armando Bazzani is a mathematician working in Bologna, uh, and he's uh, doing the, the social studies. The social studies doing, uh, are done also with uh, Angelo Cenedese from the Department of uh, Engineering, and uh, Mauro Zordana is working from the molecular side. Uh, Umberto Castiello and Nicola Cellini are the psychologists or psychophysiologists uh, making with me the studies on sleep and action selection. Okay, sorry. Thank you very much. Sorry for your